Welcome to a show about things you can see Without going far and a lot of them are free If you thought there was nothing in the old hard land You ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Randy does the steering so he won't hurl Mike's got the map, such a man of the world That's done with the camera, kinda heavy on his shoulder And that giant ball of tape, it's a world record holder Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their old backyard Look out, they're driving hard Checking out the world in their own backyard Checking out the world in their own backyard Dear TV Mailbag, how do you feel about rainouts? Hi, Don the Camera Guy here, driven inside by some inclement weather and forced to show you more behind the scenes footage than you perhaps care to see. Did we mention that? Randy's getting in touch with his feminine side, though in honor of Montana, his beard is starting to emerge. Meanwhile, Mike's making the rounds of our hotel, which seems to have an unusually large supply of GOP. Wait a minute, Mikey, you don't live here. <laughs> They're too good to me. Too good to me. <laughs> so whether or not, it appears we're heading out of Billings. How's my beard? Right past the place where Oscar Cook's Tractor World once dazzled passers-by. And on to Joliet home of Charles Ringer, noted sculptor and fan of black powder firearms. More about that later. Basically, my major influences growing up in Minnesota was my natural environment around me. Examining that, I found all sorts of geometrics. And uh, when I started working with metal after my mother taught me how to weld at about 14, I built a sculpture and it kept evolving and it was a trial and error method basically. And it's all about balance and uh, basically I use a medium that's very difficult to uh, control and deal with since it is steel. So over the years I built up a technique and expertise of how to deal with the material and make it fluid. It ends up being kind of a magnetism. The movement itself will just drag you right up to it. Actually, if you watch them long enough, they go in cycles, and uh, it's very relaxing. They'll go together and then opposite. And, uh, two units you can follow. Three units you have chaos, because you can't follow three things. They feel very delicate. Oh, they are. You can actually measure the moon, full versus not full moon with these things, because the difference of gravity. If the moon's on the other side of the planet, there's more gravity. If there's a uh, full moon, there's less gravity. That's how that works. Yeah, that's right. Because I watched that Mr. Science guy, and I swear he doesn't get it right. No, he doesn't. Time. Just say it like it is. Well, know? if we just come here, pretty much all the lessons that we need could be learned, it sounds like. Absolutely. If I don't know it, I'll make it up. Hey, that's how we do TV. Exactly. Wow. This is a Ford Falcon, 1960 Ford Falcon. What's left of one? Wow. The best use of a Ford Falcon I I've think ever so. seen. Yeah. This I built in 1984 which is uh, just scrap aluminum that I got from uh, engine parts and electric motor parts, irrigation pipe, whatever. Is there a door that closes? Well, this one right here, you bet. Wow, <laughs> excellent. You kids get out of the way. Now, will my beard grow faster? Oh, yeah. Charles, is this like yes. a pyramid? Well, you know, that's, well, that's water there. Not anymore. I'll just sop that up for you. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of hide out here, actually. So it, it's a form. It's, it's forbidding from the front and in the back is gardens and a wonderful place to live. You know, and the, and the pieces out front kind of represent something the public can do without harassing me too much. You know, they can stop and take their pictures and do all the time. And, uh, you know, I just love to watch people's necks go around in circles like owls, you know. To, Show me that again. <laughs> is this particular spot where you've ended up just really useful to the kind of st things you like to do? Oh, absolutely. 
Yeah, you have the freedom to do what you want. Uh, I can blow my cannon off in my backyard anytime. Nobody questions it. You weren't planning on firing your cannon today by any chance, were you? I could. It's all interrelated, basically, because uh, to deal with steel, you're dealing with fire. And uh, black powder is a very early form of fire. <laughs> Like Charles says, there's nothing like a big bang. And afterwards, wouldn't you know, Mike would be needing a nap. But these aren't the kind of roads where you'd want to risk being asleep at the wheel. So as we approach Bozeman, Randy pulled it over to partake in some legal stimulants, and I found myself making some new friends. I'd have stayed, but these producers always have a better plan. And believe it or not, this one has something to do with a big Conestoga and concrete ox. A roadside attraction built for pulling people off the very interstate we pretty much just got on. Don't hit him. Don't. If you're Jack, I'm not going to run over you. I'm Jack. OK. See? Well, looks like you've uh, made some sculptures here. This is. Uh... Yeah, this is a prairie schooner. We made these back in 1989-90. Uh, this is New Faithful right here. Jack, why would they call it New Faithful? <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a quarter. Is that a sack of joy? Oh, my. Oh. 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 How's my beard? Well, one time uh, I thought of making a complete area into a folk art park. This is a, a mule deer. This is Don't get a, bit by the big snake. A rattlesnake. <laughs> a prospector pulling, pulling his donkey. <laughs> Here's a test for our viewers. How many clowns in this picture? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Eight. We're paying him for this abuse. <laughs> Is that right? Not very much. Yeah, really minimally, so it works out okay. Now that's something I'd like to discuss more, but the rain is about to start again, so it's back in the Chrysler, leaving three forks behind, whipping past Butte and turning north towards Missoula, where a new, drier day will hopefully arrive tomorrow. Sure enough, a beautiful sunny morning greets us as we wind our way to a place described by the Montana Outdoor Sculpture Guide as Urethra Park. Said he'd be weed eating. A disturbing collection of late 20th century angst whose maker, at least by our standards, hardly appears disturbed at all. I assume you guys have been working on your manifestos. Oh, uh, do you need a manifesto to be here? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Everybody's pretty much got one. Yeah, I've been working on mine for... I think We've been manifesting for 10 days. <laughs> it's my welder, the cause of it all. And this is my first... Uh, first piece. First one, yeah. He's waiting on a, a repair. I tried to move him and he broke his little neck. Aww. He actually looked kind of nice once upon a time, but... Symbology in the thorax? I'm sure it must have been, yeah. It, it, it evolves. You start with one thing and it just starts going together and it's almost never like what you thought to begin with. Just worlds apart. My wife wanted a little weather vane for the top of the house. And that's what she got. <laughs> not little. <laughs> no, not on the top of the no, house. It's, it's too big a yard to put little things in it. Little things get lost in this yard. What would that be? Uh, my friends call that the married man. Ooh. Day of the Dead entry? Day of the Dead entry, yeah. We have a group of guys, we do the dead Shriner thing. I mean, what's a parade without a Shriner? Yeah, he's got a little fez going there. And, yeah. But you were trained uh, to make these things by? <laughs> no one. Uh, actually, there's a, a lot of people in the US. And if you look at, of all places, farm publications, you will see guys that have way too much time on their hands and a lot of scrap iron, and, and they, uh, tend to build these sorts of things when they're going nuts in the winter time. You look through a lot of farm publications? Unfortunately, yeah, I do. 
Mikey was reading I'm one sorry. last night was in the he? hotel. No. Plow girl. <laughs> the plow girl. <laughs> what is the gurgling Montana water here? Uh, it's just a little stream that comes through here. It's a gravity thing. Imagine mixing Ted Kaczynski with Pee Wee Herman. Uh, so that's who lives here. Hey, I'm a dangerous <laughs> ex-biker. <you know. laughs> ex? Oh, yeah. Yeah, give it all up. Gave up the biking, huh? Well, not exactly. You got a little... Yeah. Watch out for that. Yeah. <laughs> TV weasel. Did I do that? Just woke up one morning with a need to... Uh, no, it had been sort of festering for a long time, sorry to say. Yeah. Right out front, the big, the t is it a T-Rex or whatever, chomping on it? Whatever he is, yeah. yeah. What's, what's, what's going on there? Just, uh, you know, it's a, just a warning to the neighborhood kids. If they come across that fence, you know, can't help them. Sorry. <laughs> There's that angst again. Yeah. Now Neil seems nice enough. He even bestowed upon us a book <laughs> to guide our way and wow. some quick beard building advice as well. Something about watching more cows. Uh, I should warn you though, when they start to look pretty, that's the time to leave the state. <laughs> You've been in Montana too long. Way too long, yeah. <laughs> we double dating with a stock truck. <laughs> Now they say timing is everything, and though we've hit Missoula a bit too late to actually meet Marcus Wolf, there's still a few signs back here of his legendary nonprofit museum. By the time you see this, though, his voluminous collection of this and that will have been auctioned off, and only the memories of his all day tours left behind. You know, he created this unique environment. He was the mayor of the compound. You'd walk into rooms and there'd be uh, 20,000 salt and pepper shakers. And uh, it'd be a room of uh, brass blow torches. He had 50,000 hubcaps out there, and one, but they were all in order. It was a great museum. With these people who create these unique environments, they go at it nonstop. This person uh, was always embarrassed when people called him an artist, but he really was. He had this pure creativity about him that inspired artists. Artists would go out there and find a kindred spirit. Artists of all kind have made Missoula their home, like the Big Sky Mudflaps, whose scintillating debut LP I brought along, just in case, let's say, a Mud Flap and I might meet on the street. What's, wouldn't it be great if we could find a big sky? Can that be Beth Lowe, bass player, singer? Little white hair. For the here. big sky mud flaps. When was the last time someone came up to you on the streets of Missoula oh, from a TV station? That's, that's been a long time, like never. <laughs> You'll notice it's a cutout. He probably doesn't yes, have it legally. That's right. <laughs> yeah, this is on Helios, right? Yes, Helios is a local label. But then you had one on Flying Fish. We had one on Flying Fish. Flying we had Fish? One. Flying Fish? Who said <laughs> Flying Fish? I registered the fish. It's legal. It's perfectly legal. When fish are outlawed. Only outlaws will have, will have fish. You don't just happen to have a CD of the Big Sky Mudflap's newest release. What does a TV weasel have to do to talk you out of the CD? Well, take it. Just take it and run, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We were soon happily flapping away from the mountains of Missoula towards the green fields of Great Falls, where great things do await us, though this parking space is probably too good to be true. That's not for the chief, it's for the chef. You can't park this there. place, the Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art, is the final resting place for wooden figures made by Lee and D. Steen. They lived in Roundup, where we haven't actually been yet, but thanks to the miracle of TV, we can show you anyway. Neither of the Steens would have really even used the word art uh, for these pieces. They were really obsessive about making them, and each one had a, a very lively personality for Lee Steen and for Dee, so much so that uh, if a person wanted to buy them, Sometimes you could, and they might sell them for as low as $2. But they wouldn't sell ones who were fighting because they had to finish the fight before they could leave the property. They were so real and alive that that's, that's how they approached them. The hats are great. There's a flower pot hat down here. Now, this is a nice person. Yeah. He wouldn't fight. 
But the details are just everything, the ears, the things that the ears are made from, and the hats, um, how arms are attached. I like the, the saddle that's an old uh, tire tube. Part of their great success is that, as art, is that you don't really think about whether they're automobile parts or bottle caps. They just seem to work extremely well as parts of that person. But they're very childlike and non-threatening. There is a, a real sweetness to these creatures. And they, you know, I'm really glad Lee Steen uh, brought them to life, <laughs> that we get to know about them. Would Paris right Gibson approve? whoever he was. <laughs> you know, I have my own imaginative feelings about Paris Gibson, and I would say definitely not, but <laughs> that's just from the picture down in the, by the front desk. No matter what he thinks, the Steen figures, and there's hundreds more coming down from the attic, are getting their own permanent display here. On the way out, we couldn't help but notice that those dark clouds are gathering again, and that doesn't bode well for our drive. But notice how this eagle-eyed camera guy is once again turning lemons into lemonade. If only a pot of gold should be waiting in Fort Benton, that would be nice, but after another long drive, I settle for a pot to, well, let's just say I'm glad we're here. Fort Benton is famous for not one, but two furry creatures of note. Get off the tracks. Go on. Old Shep's pretty much the town mascot. For years, faithfully greeting a train each day to see if his missing master might have come back. Do you understand what happened to Shep? Yeah, you ran over by a train. Come on, Shep. Come on, boy. Get off the tracks. Then there's this guy, the Hornaday Buffalo. A cover boy for coin collectors or numismatists like myself. Did I ever mention I was president of the coin club in 1964? Yeah, why would there be so many empty pages in there? Uh, I didn't accomplish everything I wanted to during my administration. <laughs> Let me just show them at home how, how real, <laughs> how pathetic this is. Well, look, really no, there's, there's one there. There's, there's, one there. there's two on that page. But you know, there could be more. Especially if everyone watching this show would just check their drawers for those old buffalo heads and send them to Nichols for Dawn, care of this station, cause after all, a camera guy is a terrible thing to waste. Okay, let's load up. Looks like a nice chalet. But looks can be deceiving, and this particular chalet had the most toxic buildup of nicotine ever seen, not to mention the smallest personal care items known to man. What is thicker, the buffalo nickel or this bar of soap, friends? The you know, other thing is it leaves this, well, I wish you could smell this flowery scent that doesn't go with my manly beard. Roundup is indeed the small town where Lee and Dee Steen made their artistic mark. But that's not all that brought us here. There's also Tim Anderson and his so-called little mansion. Tim has no phone, so you just have to find him, which apparently we've just done. I named that after the little town I was born in, Little Falls, Minnesota. Little Falls, Minnesota. I named uh, this place after it because I was born in Little Falls, Minnesota. I thought that was a nice name. On the shed here, here's some old uh, railroad hinges that came from a friend that, you know, that I bought. And here's a horseshoe somebody donated to me. Here's a, a car wheel here. You can get a good shot of that. Uh, I just love wheels and pitchforks. <laughs> I don't know why, but just pitchforks, it just, you like the, the shapes of these items? What is well, it? You know, it, it? It's saving it, actually, you know, for people to look at in, in the future, you know. It, it's, it's not being destroyed. Like this old hub that was in the landfill out here, and I hauled it home and went through a fire. People are throwing iron in the iron pile. They're going to wish they'd never done it. Um, you can work into beautiful art. I look at my yard. It's like a, a flower garden, you know. It, you know, a rock is just as pretty as a flower, you know. You see? Well, especially when you arrange them the way you have. Yeah. People say I do a pretty good job at it, though. Huh. They say I got a green thumb. Here's something here you can take a picture of here. Look at how beautiful that rock was. They call those sheep her monuments there. 
sheep herder monuments. Yeah. They, they used them to know where they were. Yeah. But here in your yard. I built them to, you know, to just a decoration. I'm, I think I'm creating something like uh, the wild in a way. It is very much like the wild back here. Yeah. Well, how did I fasten the rocks on the house? It looks like some sort of wire or something there. Well, it's nails. Of course, it's nails. Everybody you know, nails rock. Galvanized nails because they don't rust. They'll never put the rock above the door, you know, because it'll fall on you, maybe. I call it the go-mobile. The go-mobile. Yeah, it don't go. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the no-go-mobile. <laughs> yeah, the name of it is go-mobile. And like this thing, these things here, I want to be able to flower pots out of those. Yeah, those are nice. And I like old washing machines that collect the rainwater in. You see, you can add to this stuff. Yeah. I give you an idea. You can weld horseshoes on this all the way around. You know, your imagination never ends, you know, if you had the stuff to work with. I think the artwork comes from God. And I believe that uh, uh, it's this stuff is built on another planet we cannot see and is pushed on to us. You see, I built it to become famous. Really? You know, and is it working then, out? Uh, my dream is to someday to have a, a log town with wagon wheels for windows and old car wheels. I'm looking for somebody in the United States to join me someday somewhere to build a log town. How does a person come up with a wild dream like that? You get that wagon wheel up, that car wheel up there if you can, of the shed. Not like I don't have enough directors already, but Tim's right. There are plenty of pictures to take here. And now that the pictures are taken and I'm signing the guest book, that must mean it's time to make more miles across Montana. Pausing briefly in Ingemar for a midday meal and a chance to play catch in yet another state. How about a big, oh, big sky pop up. Oh. Well, you know, they had the range wars out here, but he yeah. was ranging. It was Westinghouse versus Amana. Oh! Doesn't that feel good, throwing a guy out right on the main street throwing of a guy, Throwing a guy out west. <laughs> Must be that scraggly beard, because now Randy's been hauled in for crimes against TV. Wanted for crimes against television. But at least we're getting to eat. The specialty here at the Jersey Lily is the sheep herder's hors d'oeuvre made with chunks of onion and orange. And of course, that most magical fruit of all. Oh, yeah, that's pretty darn good. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna spend the next 1,500 miles in the car. This ought to be a lot of fun, oh, don't you? Don't you know, this is our world famous spoon for our beans? Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. All the little farts climb out of. <laughs> that's public TV there at its finest. <laughs> We're noticing extra MPGs as Montana's loss becomes North Dakota's gain. And if our bearings are good, chances are we're about to find the Enchanted Highway, where giant sculptures just keep popping up along the road to region. Thanks to a former high school principal turned artistic entrepreneur. What can I do to bring people off the interstate? There's a million plus people traveling on interstate, and I thought, I could, I could do sculptures, but they can't be normal sculptures. They gotta be the world's largest sculptures. Now that might attract some people. So then, and I thought, well, what are we good at too? And I thought local farmers are good at welding. Now that I've started, I've got, a, I made up my mind, there'll be one every three miles. So that'll be 11 of, they're all gonna put 11 of them on this highway. Uh, one day we counted over 100, 100 cars coming down the road. And that's 100 cars that would have never been here if it wouldn't have been for the Enchanted Highway or the sculptures. Uh, there's still people in town that shake their head and they call me crazy and they call me all that. And uh, I've got town people that don't back the project. Even though the town's dying, they still go, well, it's, it's a crazy and, and all this. And I'm going, well, uh, I always think, well, they've never built a statue to a critic. So I guess uh, let the critics be where they may and I will keep building. I don't claim to be an artist. I never, I was, I taught uh, business in Fayette, so I never was an artist. And I always tell the farmers that I work with, they always say, well, we're not artists. And I say, everybody's an artist in different ways. You just uh, uh, let yourself dream. You gotta let yourself go and, 
and uh, you're an artist in one way or another. I've never given up on a project yet and from education on up, so now I'm going to complete it. Don used to make lots of trips to the principal's office, so... Can you say something to, you know, <laughs> can you scold him just like... Yeah. Do I have to call your parents or what? <laughs> Let's see, I've got this paddle over here. Whoa! Ooh, the of that I just okay. hope it's not going on my permanent record. From deep in the heart of North Dakota, this is Don the Camera Guy, signing off. I think it's a roadside revelation, Dottie. Montana rocks, baby. Montana rocks, and so does James. I was thinking about lifting a little merchandise. There's t-shirts. We could take those shirts, but it would be wrong. Get off those tracks, man. Get off, off the, the tracks, track, Chef. This is the only time in 4,000 miles you've let me drive. Yeah. Wow, Dad. So kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> this, during this discussion, I think it's great. Right. Let me lend you one. <laughs> Go ahead, hoist oh, that thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't even. Oh, you can. Oh. You can, but not for long. Uh, do you want Don's underwear in there? Not really. No. Do I have to? <laughs> Move them over a little. I got to get the thing locked. Here, now I'll have to burn that stick. <laughs> yeah, someone will have to burn it. <laughs>